Hello and welcome to the complete JavaScript course. I'm really, really happy to welcome you to this huge course, which will take you from knowing nothing about JavaScript to an expert JavaScript developer. And learning JavaScript is a great choice, not only because it's the most popular programming language in the world, but also because it basically powers the entire modern web. And this course is, in my opinion, the very best way of learning JavaScript that you will find. And so you have come to the right place. Now, before we start learning, let's take a couple of minutes to get a quick overview of how the course is organized and the projects that we're going to build together so that you know exactly what to expect. So the course contains about 20 sections with over 60 hours of video content. And we're gonna kick off the course in section two and three with the very basics of the JavaScript language to give you a solid foundation for the rest of the course. Then you will learn some general skills that you will need as a developer, like problem solving, fixing errors, and setting up a development environment. After that, we built our very first project with a user interface. So this section is about DOM manipulation and we will build not one, but actually three beautiful but simple applications. Then in section eight, we will take a detailed look behind the scenes of JavaScript to learn how the language actually works. And this will give you valuable knowledge that many other developers simply don't have. Then in sections nine and 10, we will keep working on our JavaScript fundamentals, but now with a focus on more modern ES6 topics, such as maps and destructuring, and also strings, functions, closures, and more. Then throughout sections 11 and 12, we will build our next beautiful project, which will teach you all you need to know about array methods, numbers, dates and timers. And after that, we jump right into our next project, which is gonna be this beautiful website, full packed with visual effects and components, such as lazy image loading, a tapped component, a slider, and so much more. In section 14, we finally reach the pretty advanced, but also very important topic of object-oriented programming with constructor functions and ES6 classes, which will then, in the next section, allow us to build this stunning real-world project. And besides object-oriented programming, this project will also teach you how to incorporate a map and how to actually plan and structure a project, which is also super important. After that, you're gonna learn all about asynchronous JavaScript, which is used for things like loading data from external web servers with Ajax. Then in section 17 and 18, we will learn how modern JavaScript applications are actually built using cutting edge technologies like NPM, Babel, Parcel, and ES6 modules. We then take these modern tools and everything that we have learned up until this point to build this biggest and coolest project in the course. And we then even finish this project by deploying it to the internet using Netlify and Git in section 19. So as you see, I included everything you need to know about JavaScript in this course, along with a ton of real world projects and challenges. Now, your next step is to watch the next lecture, which is super important to set you up for success in this course, with instructions for many things like how to ask questions. Now, if you already know the fundamentals of JavaScript, then after the next lecture, please move ahead to the section called how to navigate this course, where you will then find your perfect learning path to navigate this huge course. But if you're new to JavaScript, then of course just move on to the next section. 
All right. So I hope that you're going to have a ton of fun with this course, that you become a really advanced JavaScript developer, and that you will take your web development career to the next level. And with that being said, let's finally get started. Now, before you start, here are 10 quick considerations on how to take this course. And I promise they are super short and super important. So please don't skip this video. And first of all, there are many different types of students in this course. Some have never programmed in their life. Others have experience with other languages, but not with JavaScript. And even others have some experience with JavaScript, but want to become even more advanced. And this course is for all of you. Everyone is welcome. So please don't write a bad review right away if the course is too easy or too hard or progressing too slow or too fast for you. I built this course with everyone in mind. Now to make the course perfect for you, you can always rewatch lectures, jump to other more advanced sections, watch the course with slower or faster playback speed, or ask questions in the Q&A section. Of course, you can give a one-star review if the course is absolutely terrible, but please at least wait a couple of sections to get a good idea of the course. Now, about actually taking the course, you need to code along with me. And this is crucial. You will learn exactly zero JavaScript skills by just sitting and watching me code. So you have to code yourself, even if you're just typing the same code as I am typing in the video. It doesn't matter as long as you're coding. Next, try all the coding challenges. Do the best that you can, but if you get stuck for too long, then simply watch the solution. And I can't stress this enough. You have to try the coding challenges because otherwise you will miss half of the learning opportunity in this course. And please don't beat yourself up if you can't figure out the solution. This is completely normal, trust me. And figuring out the solution is actually not even the main point of these challenges. So if that happens, just rewatch the lectures that were covered, try to understand them better and move on. If you want the course material to stick, then take notes. Notes on code syntax, notes on theory concepts, and really notes on everything. You can take too many notes. And everyone has their own style, so just find yours. Now, if this is your first time ever programming, then please don't get overwhelmed. It's 100% normal that you will not understand everything at the beginning. Just keep going through the first few sections, even if you don't understand everything at first. You soon will, believe me. But please just don't think, I guess coding is not for me. That thought is simply not allowed here, okay? So keep in mind that everyone has different learning speeds. I have seen tens of thousands of students progressing through my courses. So believe me, this is completely normal. In the first couple of sections of the course, don't bother understanding exactly why things work the way they do in JavaScript. Also in the beginning, don't stress about efficient code or fast code or clean code. That's all super important, don't get me wrong, but in the first few sections, while still learning, we just want to make things work. We will understand the why later in the course. And of course, uh, make the code clean as well. The sections in the course build on one another. So before moving on from a section, make sure that you understand exactly what was covered. So take a break, review the code that we wrote, review your notes, and review the projects that we built. And maybe even write some code yourself in order to practice. 
only then you're ready to move on. If you ever have an error in your code or a question, always start by trying to solve it yourself, because this is absolutely essential for your progress. Now, if you cannot solve the problem, then check the Q&A section, because someone probably already had the same problem before. And if that doesn't help either, then just ask a new question. And to do that, use a short description, post your code on codepen.io and share the link in the Q&A. Because without the code, we will not be able to help you. I built and recorded this course on a Mac, but everything works the exact same way on Windows or Linux. So if something doesn't work on your computer, it's not because you're using a different operating system, okay? And now, finally, and most importantly, have fun. Coding is a lot of fun, and it's so rewarding to see something that you have built yourself. So if you're feeling frustrated for some reason, stop whatever you're doing and come back later. Always, always have fun while coding, okay? And with that being said, let's now get started. Now, before we can write any code, we need to install and configure a code editor. So a code editor is the main tool for any developer. And we use it, as the name says, to write our actual code. And so let's now go download a code editor. And the one that I advise everyone to use is Visual Studio Code, or VS Code for short. So this is, in my opinion, the best code editor by far that exists. And that's not just my own opinion. So VS Code is right now uh, by far the most popular and most widely used code editor. And that is for a reason. It simply is the best and easiest to use. And of course, it is completely free. Now, there are alternatives if you don't like VS Code for some reason. So you can use Atom or you can use something like Brackets as well, which is the code editor that I used to teach a previous version of this course. But again, I'm going to use VS Code in this course. And so I really advise you to follow this course uh, using the exact same code editor to make everything easier for you to follow. So again, this code editor is completely free and it works on every platform. So just download uh, whatever installer that you need for your own platform, uh, then install, of course, that code editor on your computer. And once you're done, uh, come back to this video so that we can together set it up a little bit just so that we can get started in the next section. Okay. So I hope that you managed to install VS Code on your system. And as you open it up, it should look something like this. Now the colors should probably all be different, but we will fix that in a second. And maybe this welcome screen also looks different. And maybe these icons here, because you might've installed the editor uh, sometime after I recorded this video. But anyway, the main things uh, should still work the same. And so let's actually uh, start by installing a theme. So a theme is basically uh, all the colors that you see here on the screen and also the colors in the actual code that you're going to write, okay? Now you don't need to install uh, a theme. So you can simply change one of the themes that is already uh, included in VS Code. So just click down here on this icon and then color theme. And then here you can try uh, one of these out. And so if you like one of them, you can simply keep that one. But as you see, the theme that I have is this Monokai Pro. And this one was not included by default by a VS Code. And so if you want to install the same theme as I have, then simply come here to this extensions tab and then search for Monokai Pro. Okay, then it's this first one here. And then you can simply, uh, probably somewhere here, click on download. 
Now, this theme is actually a paid theme that you can buy for about 10 US dollars or so. However, you can actually also use the theme for free forever. It will then just ask you every couple of days uh, for you to buy it. But for me, that has never been a big problem. Now, I just wanted to quickly mention that I'm not in any way affiliated with the theme and that this is not an advertisement. So this is simply the theme that I love and that I use every single day. But of course, you can use a different theme or a theme that you have already been using yourself. But if you like the theme, then you can support the creator or you can use the theme for free or you can, of course, uh, also use another theme. And one other theme uh, that is very similar and which actually already comes with uh, VS Code uh, is Monokai uh, Classic. So it's this one. So the colors here look a little bit different, but the Monokai Pro theme that I use is actually based on this one. And so therefore colors are quite similar. And so therefore uh, this one is also a good pick uh, in case you want to use a very similar theme to mine, but don't want to use Monokai Pro. But I'm gonna set it back to Monokai Pro now. And so that's it about the theme. And so let's now move on and also talk about VS Code settings. And so here I'm gonna show you a couple of settings that I'm using in the course videos and that you should probably use as well uh, to make it easier for you to follow the videos and also to code on your own later on. So the first setting is this autosave uh, setting that you should set to on focus change, okay? And so what this will do is that whenever you leave the code editor or you go to some other file, then it will automatically save that file without you having to do anything. And so that's very helpful. Now, if this isn't showing up here for you, uh, up here you can simply search for everything. So you can simply search autosave like this. And then again, change it to on focus change. Then you could also uh, change the font size, but that's not really important for you. Then another one is this multi cursor modifier. And this one sounds a bit weird, but you can simply set it to control command uh, or you can leave it at alt. So just when you need it, uh, just know which of the two uh, you selected. But for now, again, this is not important. I will only start using it a bit later. Then I also have the word wrap turned on, but again, that's not that important. Okay, so I think those are actually the most important ones. There's just another one that you need to change and that is called format uh, on save. All right. So just turn this one here on, uh, which says that a formatter must be available. And by now it is not, but in one of the next sections, we will actually install a formatter to automatically format our code. And by then this setting here must be turned on. Okay, and that's actually it for this lecture already. Now just notice that I'm working on a Mac here, but everything will work exactly the same on Windows and on Linux. So this VS Code Editor, as I mentioned earlier, works just the same on all the platforms. Now, just one final and small adjustment that we can uh, make, which I just remembered, is that besides uh, changing the main color theme, we can also change the theme of the file icons. And so again, if you want your VS Code to look exactly the same as mine, then you can select these uh, SETI uh, icons here. So by default, I think uh, it should be this minimal, but I prefer these ones here. And so by selecting this one here, then your code editor uh, will probably look exactly the same as mine. All right, and with that, we are actually ready to move on. Just make sure that you also have uh, the latest version of Google Chrome installed on your computer because that is going to be the browser in which we will be testing our code. All right, but with that, we are now really done with this video. And so I see you in the next one.